starting on December 5th, that's where they're going to look at reshuffling things depending on what happens, depending on where programs might be with the virus, with protocols. And we just have to be ready to be to be nimble. Co coaches uh, aware of that as well. And that's where we are with uh, this whole virus. Here comes the pressure. Hit as he throws, intercepted at the 15-yard line. Buddy Johnson, touchdown Aggies! Toughness, effort, discipline, pride, and grit. Those aren't words we just say. They're a creed we live by, man. Let's go, baby, let's go! Go be what you can be. Go be what God's made you to be. Go be an egg. Getting ready for this cold weather game against Auburn, 11 a.m. It's gonna be about 45 degrees, so get ready for that cold weather. So we're basically getting the loops together. So when we unload the truck and unload their bags, it makes it just easier to just put on the hook and they can just get there. Everything's ready to go for them. Socks, gloves, um, pants, and long tights. We literally pack getting ready for cold weather pretty much every week. We're gonna pack everything, pull everything and pack it and let them decide. I don't want to be the guy that decides what they wear. Try to get them everything they can, where they don't have to come out and say, hey, I need this. Hang on, time out, Goose. Did you say it won't be bad this week? Not good, no rain. It's probably not gonna, I mean, it's probably not gonna get much higher than 53. With it beginning to look a lot like Christmas, Aggie football prepares to extend its regular season into December. Love it, I love the cold weather. If it's like, it was like 30 degrees this morning and I was walking around in our workout, like cut off shirt and shorts and I was comfortable. I love it. Yeah, you know us Texas guys, you know how, how we feel about the cold. <laughs> Would you know it's cold when my lips start hurting? <laughs> it seems Bobby Brown doesn't seem to like the cold too much. Hey, it's better than being out there. Yeah, I'm from Houston. I'm not too fond of uh, cold weather, but uh, you know, it's football. You know, it's 60 minutes. And I, I feel like I'll be okay for those 60 minutes, you know, just going out there, you know, keep my, keep my mind on football and, and, and not thinking about the weather. I feel like it'll be different, you know, playing in, in cold weather like that, you know, especially because it's uh, later on in December. We usually don't, we usually just play bowl game around these times. You know, practice will be a lot colder, so, you know, guys will really have to be locked in in practice. So, you know, this will be a major uh, t uh, test for us mentally, and, you know, I'm excited to see how we take it. This football weather, I'm loving it. I can't wait. I'm getting more energized throughout this practice too, so that's good because that means my game getting better. I'm just getting more focused and I'm just ready. I feel like uh, we've adapted and adjusted to change uh, pretty well throughout the season, so I feel like this would be just another step for us as a, as a team and as a group to move forward and be successful. I mean, I don't know if it's a unanimous rule, but for us, the maroon guns, that's our rule. We don't, we don't wear sleeves. Um, we had a few freshmen, like they wore them for a game. We were like, we don't wear sleeves, don't wear them. I like not wearing sleeves anyways. You know, I feel like it sends a message to the other team, like, you know, not really cold, you know, it's mind games. I try not to wear a lot of clothes just because, you know, I like the cuts and the bruises, you know, I love to get them. It just shows the identity behind football, you know, it's, it's a rough sport. I like to be able to go home, and, you know, see my cuts and my wounds from my, my battle scars and you know it's, it's just huge and you know those little small things is what actually makes me love the game so much. Family on me, family on three, one, two, three. Bam. Bam. Let's go, hurry up, hurry up. Hey, like, yeah. hey buddy, welcome to the Zoom. Congratulations on the uh, SEC award. Thank you. For his performance in the win over LSU, 
Buddy Johnson was named the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. To even be in this position, he's put in the work and dedicated himself to becoming a leader. When OT and T Dot left, I knew you know someone had to step up. So I had to talk to Coach Elko, and he asked me, "Why not me?" So you know I was up for the task. And, you know, when anyone challenges me like that, I feel like it's my obligation to step up and you know get the job done. So you know I, I just looked myself in the mirror, like Coach Fish, I would say. Stepped up and, and I decided to be a man. <laughs> Buddy's been a great leader for us on uh, on defense, especially uh, especially at that linebacker level. Uh, he's he's been able to make the calls, do everything right, and just off the field, just his leadership, getting guys to uh, be all on the same page is, is special. You know, I feel like Buddy always had that, uh, especially as a freshman coming in. Buddy is a phenomenal leader, and even I think this year his leadership skills have risen up tremendous. And obviously, it's going just just hand in hand with the the way he's playing. I see him grow a lot on the football field and in the film room. Just seeing how stupid of a game he is, but off the field, I see he's still a goofball to me. He's still goofy. He still do all the goofy stuff he used to do. People don't get to see, but other than that, he's a good person. He's a great athlete, great student of the game, and I can't wait to see what he do. There's no doubting Buddy's commitment to this football team. If anyone knows that, it's wide receiver Cam Buckley, who doubles as Buddy's roommate and BFF from growing up in Dallas. Man, I wouldn't even consider Buddy a friend. I would consider him more like my brother, in all honesty. We talk about everything. I can go to him about anything. He's going to keep it real with me 100%. And then Buddy in the small circle I hang around is some people that's very close, very close to me and I love them like brothers. Usually whenever it's them two and they're on the football field, um, <clears throat> everything is you know pretty much focused and locked in, but um, once they step off the field, they're kind of, I ain't gonna say clowns, but they like to have fun. <laughs> Just me, you know, being on the field and him being hurt, I've seen so much about him, you know. Just like this past weekend, you know, I, I scored a touchdown. He's running up to me like he scored a touchdown, you know. It's just little things like that that, you know, there's not too many guys that, friends like that, you know, that's around. You know, he's a great friend, you know. I think our bond with each other is huge, and, you know. I think it, uh, this have, have helped us bond a lot more because we, we uh, aren't on the field at the same time, so he's over there supporting me, you know, that's huge. Like Buddy said, Cam Buckley isn't playing this season. In preseason camp, he suffered a torn ACL that has sidelined him the past four months. As it often does, the injury has brought new light and perspective to an otherwise dark situation. When we were in quarantine, you know, we were grinding so hard, you know, so it just hurt me, you know, to see that happen for him. And I, I think he took it the right way because, you know, he, he just loved the game so much that it hurt him so bad not to be out there, but. And just knowing the guy, uh, Buck, you know, he's always a hard worker. He loves to play football. So I know he would be putting his all into rehab. And uh, I know it's a grind, you know, every day, just coming up here and kind of doing the same stuff, but it's all gonna pay off for him. I think when you are sitting on the side, looking at the game, you get to, cause I'm still in meetings, so I'm get to pay attention more to what the coach was talking about. I get to see the defense, what actually happened and how, because stuff like that, things happen so fast in the field, you can miss it. But to see from the sideline, you see what you learn in practice is what they actually doing in the games. You know, it's hard when someone gets uh, injured, you know, it's hard and I know that uh, they go through a lot. So, you know, just having a friend there for you, you know, just being there, you know, when, when, when he needs you to call him. It's been joy, it's been heartache, it's been, it's been everything, all of the above. But to see my team go out there every weekend, just give me joy, give me, uplift me every week to keep going to get better every day. What had me so tired today, cause we worked out so early, and we did like a pure workout, like we was in the stands. So I'm like, I need a nap. My rehab is going well. Julie, I'm with Julie every single day. And then the things they teach me, even about running. Cause when you do your ACL and meniscus, you get to learn everything over again, become more powerful. And the things they teach me is helping me become a better athlete. Would, but, but hey, he's really healing. They say he's ahead of schedule, really healing up and doing a great job in his rehab. So yeah, it is. I mean, 
And, uh, you know, I think uh, having again, that experience and, and maturity makes a difference. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And Pepsi, the official soft drink of Texas A&M football. When you're in the hunt, there's no holding back because there's no margin for error. You have to stay focused and stay hungry. Lock into what you got. We're here for business, man. They're next. You eat. You got to do what you do. We got to do what we do. Got to do put our will upon them, not worried about the scoreboard. Got to start fast, finish stronger. Team on everything, guys. Team on everything. We ain't here in individual battles. We're here to win individual battles so our team can be successful, okay? We got a hell of a football team. Love, trust, and believe in each other. Eat today. Yep. It's time to eat. They're next. Yep. Eat. Hell with them. Don't matter about them. Put your will upon it. Play our game. Do what we do. Let's go. Welcome to Jordan Hare Stadium. We're on the campus of Auburn where the fight Texas Aggies, ranked number five, take on the Auburn Tigers. Aggies, first and 10 from the 25 yard line. Mon to the right pitch, Anaya Smith right side, and Anaya up to the 39 yard line, the 14 yard gain. The pitch, Isaiah right side across midfield, into Auburn territory and stumbles as he gets towards the 40 yard line. Kellen chased, Kellen throws, Kellen completes. Near the 30 yard line, he had pressure coming and completes the pass for a first down. Kellen gives Isaiah, cuts diagonally right side, cuts back into the middle of the field, across the 20 to the 15 yard line. Kellen fires back of the end zone for Widemeyer, touchdown Aggies! Jalen Widemeyer. The corner route to Widemeyer, and uh, this is a perfect throw from Kellen, threw it up where only Paul Jalen Weidermeyer <laughs> could come down with it, and he does for the Aggie touchdown. The Aggies go 75 yards, 11 plays in six minutes. Bo Nix is the quarterback, empty backfield, and that pass is well behind Anthony Schwartz. We'll try this again, and this time dropped. Keldrick Carper was right in Anthony Schwartz's face. The start is perfect. A touchdown by the offense, a three and out by the defense. Auburn does get a late first quarter field goal. Up seven to three, A&M looks to extend. Up the middle is a chain and a lot of room for him. Devon again, and he gets through and into Auburn territory to the 30 inside to about the 27 yard line. Cuts through, cuts back, up the middle, inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. This will be a 29-yard attempt from inside the right hash. Choate to Constantinou. The Seth Small kick is a line drive kick that he hooked to the left. A missed field goal is followed by another mistake. A sure sack goes right through the Aggies' hands. Bo Nix miraculously finds the end zone. A&M loses their grip on the lead. Adversity strikes. Now this team has to strike back. Give to Isaiah right up the middle. And a lot of room for Isaiah. Just dragged down across the 40 yard line or he would have been sprinting towards the south end zone. Kellen looks to the left, lobs a pass. Hezekiah Jones with his first catch. He's into Auburn territory by a yard. A chain to the left, then cuts back up the middle, breaks a tackle, gets inside the 35 yard line and falls ahead to the 30 itself. Kellen in the pocket. Across the middle, he's got Anaya oh. Smith who slips as he hits the 15 yard line but falls ahead to the 13. Another first down for the Aggie. Isaiah angles left side, Isaiah inside the 10, puts his head down, driving that pile and now pushed ahead. Isaiah just might get in. No, he's going to be just shy as forward progress. Stopped at the one yard line. Kellen falls right side, 
Touchdown. Now they signal. Kellen waited a beat and then fell on the right side over Jared Hocker and Carson Green. Hey, we gotta keep eating, bro. 14 10. Aggies have the lead. What a response for Texas AM. Eight plays, 75 yards. The Pulse, Texas A&M football, is brought to you by HEB. No store does more than my HEB. And Pepsi, the official soft drink of Texas A&M football. We got to go take this game. We got to go take this game. Nothing. Keep doing what you're doing. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Don't worry about the scoreboard. Play your space, win your space, score ball, say what you want. Put your will upon him. We're being physical, we're being demanding. We gotta be consistent. Love, trust, and believe in each other, the system and everything we're doing right here. We gotta lock into what we do, guys. Let's finish this. Let's go! Hey, let's eat. Live beat second half. Come on. Finish on three. One, two, three. Finish. Let's go. Auburn clicks coming out of halftime. Momentum is on the move and headed towards the Tigers' sideline. Jet sweep right side for Schwartz. Schwartz into Aggie territory. And just like that, Auburn is inside the Aggie 30. Knicks, happy feet running. Knicks dives for the first down. Knicks keeper right side. Bo Nix into the end zone for Auburn. In the pocket, over the middle, intended for Hezekiah Jones. It's deflected and incomplete. Got the umpire right in the chest. Yep. Tank Bigsby around the left side. Gets between two defenders into Aggie territory at the 30. It's a race at the 20 and goes out of bounds, shy of the 10 yard line. Carlson kicks it through. Although in the Tigers' lair, the Aggies start to roar heading to the fourth quarter. After getting a break, they look to break Auburn's will. Kellen fakes the pitch, got inside the pressure. He gets to the midfield and goes out of bounds in the Auburn sideline at the 49-yard line. Kellen in the pocket, flush to his right, throws back across the middle, and it is caught at the 20-yard line. That is a clutch throw and a clutch catch. The Aggies needed Chase Lane. Kellen in the pocket, a lot of time over the middle. Deflected and caught in a touchdown by Jalen Watermeyer. Touchdown, Aggies. To the left side, cutting back in is Shivers, and there's not a lot there at all. Fakes the end around and just back across the 30, maybe to the original line of scrimmage. Bo Nix throws left side, back Thank shoulder, by it bounced, incomplete. Miles Jones with that coverage. Kellen to the right, keeps, Kellen tucks it, hashes, cuts to the right, into Auburn territory, ahead to the 40 yard line. Kellen Mond with a first down gain from the Auburn 42. Kellen in the pocket, throws deep right side for Anias, got him! Inside the 10, inside the five! You understand me? Throw your heart across the goal. Boys, 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 boys. Second back through is Anaya Smith, and Anias has the touchdown, Aggies. Anias goes right up the middle, and uh, that offensive line blows Auburn off the ball. And it's a touchdown for the Aggies from four yards out. Leading 28 to 20, it's getting late. That's code for it's time to finish. Third and four for midfield for the Aggies. Uh, the little slant and it is caught across the 45 yard line. Anaya Smith signals first down. Isaiah cuts back up the middle. Isaiah still on his feet. Isaiah pushed the ball inside the 30 to the 25 yard line. Ooh, that makes a big difference now. Now the Aggies are in field goal range if they need it. 
to put the Aggies up 31 to 20. Seth's kick, high, long, and good. And the Aggies have an 11 point lead here at Auburn with a minute nine remaining. Execution. Well, I didn't want to tell you why I really like this decision because he missed one earlier. That's why I like this decision. Give Seth a chance to put this game out of reach, and he did it. Let's go! Another one! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go. Yes, sir! A&M controlled the ball for almost 11 minutes in the fourth quarter. When Auburn had it, the defense wasn't going to allow for any hope on the Plains. The Aggies stay on a roll, winning 31 to 20. Go. Big go, baby. Let's go. Great win, me, my boy Moose. He's 71, right? We on the rise, baby. We on the rise. First of all, guys, that's the way you're supposed to celebrate it after taking wins a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy all these wins, man. Enjoy all these wins. First of all, I'm going to say something else. An eight-game schedule. That's the first A&M team to ever win seven games in the SEC on this. It feels good to be first. You need the first to do something, okay? But I'm going to tell you what. That game right there, we knew this was going to be a dog fight. I told you coming over, this is a tough place to play. They play tough. They challenged us every way, shape, and form they did. Offensively, defensively, special teams. We knew they were coming here. Here's what I'm proud of. There's a hell of a football team in here, guys. Yeah. And what I'm saying, you're learning not to let things, the momentum swings, you're learning to control what you can control, doing your job. And when they respond, you respond. They respond, you respond. And you're matching, you're, you're learning competitive nature that is understanding at a championship level. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how you got to respond to things. You don't back down. You just accept the challenge and you go higher. You had crumbs, you stayed hungry, you did things. Uh, defense did a really good job. I thought they early did a good job, and they got a couple drives on us. We got to get some things sewn up, and they ran the ball on us, which is uncharacteristic. And they got us the second half. We lost contain. They got up. We didn't get a drive. They come down. I'm going to tell you the critical point. We got that stop, and it was 17 14 to make it 20 to 14. That game didn't get one to two scores. In offense, what'd you do? You matched and went right down there and scored and went 21 20. In defense, you got off the field. Offense, you went right back down and made it 28 20. And then you got off the field on defense. And on offense, you went right back down at 8 o'clock. And then we're set at that. Hey, Seth. Seth, where you at, buddy? Hey, good circle. Early in that game, after point it didn't hit good. Always have faith in your son. Yeah. But you know what? I knew two scores is more important than wins a game, and I, I count on you every damn time, son. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, offensive line ran the ball for 313 yards. Yeah. 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 Challenge 18 to 23. Yeah. 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 Yeah.